So, uh, <clears throat> start with uh, the call. So, last time we have done this. Uh, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> PNR was a uh, positive definite matrix, a symmetric positive definite matrix. And then <clears throat> PNR1 was the uh, matrices in here which have determinant 1. Like this. And then, <clears throat> then I see that uh, GLN R has a natural action on this uh, PNR. Namely, if I take some element G from GLN R and some matrix P here, then G dot P is a G P G transpose. And then we have seen that this, this is a transitive action. <clears throat> and similarly, SLN R acts transitively on PN R 1. <clears throat> and so therefore, using that, we can identify this PN R 1 as um, SLN R mod SONR. So then, <clears throat> yeah, so not only transitive, so we have checked, we also defined a Riemannian metric on that, so let me recall. So the Riemannian metric on this was um, for all P inside uh, P and R and two tangent vectors x, y at P. So, of course, since PNR was an open subset, so we identified this one with the symmetric matrices. And then you define the inner product of XY. We trace of P inverse X, P inverse Y. This was the remaining matrix. And uh, we have checked that this action, PNR action, is by isometries. So GLN R acts by isometries on PNR. Okay. <clears throat> and then we proved that it's a symmetric space and this uh, for every point P we had this uh, map sigma P. So sigma P was uh, sending any point Q to P Q inverse P, or you can think of this as P, Q, inverse P transpose as, since P is symmetric. So this was the candidate involution for every point. And then we checked the condition that this is, this is an isometry and its derivative at P is minus one, minus identity. <coughs> we checked that, and then I call this kind of uh, isometry sigma P Compose, so let's say sigma p1. This I call transvections. In particular, if I consider something like this, um, sigma p compose sigma identity, <clears throat> then uh, the action of this one is um, so sigma p, and then this is q inverse, and then use that. So then you have p q. P, or you can write P, Q, P transpose. So this is the same thing as how the element P is acting on P and R, so giving this G and R action. So, and I denoted this um, by A, P. <clears throat> These things we have checked. And finally, I wrote down some formula, which proof was very complicated, so tau x, so for all x inside S in R, <clears throat> we wrote down this tau x. Um, so this is a linear map from, um, so we, we proved that this is self-adjoint also. M in R to M in R. So tau 
x on y, this was uh, exponential minus x by 2 times the derivative of uh, exponential x plus t y at t equal to 0 and then exponential minus uh, x by 2. So this was the <coughs> this thing and uh, we check that this is self adjoint. So, so these things were done last time. So, we will continue from that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so the proof was uh, kind of long computation and so on and uh, we have a similar uh, <coughs> lemma like that, but just one, uh, one more like that. You say <coughs> this uh, so lemma. So let x be inside S in R. Then uh, we, we this lemma says something about this uh, operator tau x. It gives a nice description of that. So this is the so number one, the tau x is the derivative derivative at x of the composition of the mass so there are two mass so one is a uh, exponential the other one is this transvection um, yeah so sigma identity com sigma p where this point p is um, exponential x by 2. So, this gives a nice description of this map tau x <coughs> ok and then further it says that um, tau of x is a uh, sine hyperbolic of add x by 2 divided by add x by 2 <clears throat> okay and 3 uh, so for all y inside s in r so compute the norm of this y and compute the norm of tau x y so then they satisfy this. Tau x is increasing the length and the equality holds <coughs> each and only x y commutes. x y equal to y x. So this is the only uh, technical lemma before we, I mean <coughs> this is the last one such, yes. Yeah, yeah. So tau x you can define all on all matrices, but um, this will be self-adjoint only if uh, it is in, is in R. Yeah. So yeah. So I am yes. I am taking the derivative. Uh, yeah. So basically, then I should say that tau x is uh, mapping um, S in R into S in R, and then it is satisfying this. Okay. Because that is our main uh, case of interest. <coughs> this is there, and then um, yeah. So I wanted to say something. So yeah. So how do I go about this uh, proof? So proof. So uh, let us see what is this uh, composition. So <coughs> so. Sigma identity compose sigma p on any point q uh, is, uh, let's see, so this was uh, sigma identity and then p q inverse p and then apply this one. So, we get uh, p inverse q p inverse. So then I can write this as um, exponential uh, minus x by 2 times q times exponential minus x by 2 like this and so now you compute the derivative of this uh, composition of exponential and uh, this thing okay 
So to compute the derivative, so what you do, so you want to compute at ax, so therefore you <coughs> start with this, um, so let, let alpha be the curve uh, x plus ty, okay? So where, uh, so we are trying to compute the derivative at x, so uh, y is an s in r. So now to compute the derivative of, uh, I mean the derivative of this composition. So first we apply exponential map, and then you apply this transaction. Okay, on y. So this will be same thing as the derivative e d t of uh, this whole thing on this. So sigma. Uh, so actually we have computed this one. This composition. <clears throat> so therefore, we can just write uh, exponential um, minus x by 2 times uh, exponential x plus ty times exponential minus x by 2, like this, at t equal to 0. Okay? But this was precisely your tau x. This proves the first one, so it was quite straightforward. Is it fine? Okay. So, uh, so next, what you do is that. Uh, <coughs> so, to prove number two, yeah. So maybe on that side. <coughs> to prove to prove the number two, so what you do is that. Um, Uh, again, you consider the same curve alpha t going to uh, x plus ty. And uh, so then you notice that, uh, so use this simple identity that uh, alpha t times exponential alpha t equal to, so this commutes with this one, so times alpha t. And then uh, compute this uh, derivative of this one at t equal to zero. So then what do I get? So <clears throat> compute the derivative. So alpha prime t times uh, exponential alpha t plus uh, alpha t times the derivative of this one. And that is equal to. Um, the derivative of this one times alpha t plus uh, exponential alpha t times alpha prime t. And then evaluate at t equal to zero. So then you will get, uh, so this one is y, this one is exponential x, okay. and uh, this one is. Uh, x and uh, so let us give it a name so this one I call it e0 and uh, this one again e0 times um, x and this one uh, again is uh, e to the uh, exponential x times y okay so this means that um, I can write this x times e0 minus uh, e0 times x is equal to um, exponential x times y minus y times exponential x. Okay. Now notice that uh, this has this e0 has something to do with uh, tau x. <coughs> so note that. So tau x y, this was simply uh, exponential minus x by 2 times e0 times exponential minus x by 2. So I want to relate this thing with the tau x, so therefore I just multiply exponential minus x by 2 on both sides of this. So <clears throat> 
therefore from here i'll get the uh, x commutes with exponential minus x by 2 so i can write uh, this one okay, minus uh, exponential minus x by 2 times e0 times exponential minus x by 2 times x and this side i get um, exponential <coughs> x by 2 times y times exponential minus x by 2 minus exponential minus x by 2 times y times exponential um, x by 2. And so this one is a tau x, this one, tau x, so write that. Therefore, I get uh, x times tau x y minus tau x y times x. This is equal to now <coughs> this one. Uh, let me call so this was uh, this. This will be simply exponential add x by two acting on y. And similarly, this one minus uh, exponential minus add x by 2 acting on y okay so therefore uh, finally this this is simply um, add x on um, tau x y and this one then i can write this up uh, since if we call so sine hyperbolic was what so sine hyperbolic was e to the x minus e to the minus x by 2. So use that. So then I can write this as 2 times sine hyperbolic of at x by 2 acting on y. Okay. And uh, so this one I can write simply as um, 2 times at x by 2. So then 2 will cancel, so I have simply like this, okay, and so let me recall, so where do I want to reach, I want to prove this one, we are almost close, so now uh, maybe, uh, yeah, so basically then you will try to divide this, multiply by inverse, but this is not invertible because it kills x, right, so so you have to be slightly more careful. So, yeah, so then, <clears throat> so you want to claim then, yeah, so, so let, uh, let us call this operator T, which is tau x minus um, sine hyperbolic at x by 2 divided by at x by 2. By this I mean first compute sine hyperbolic x by x and then you get a power series and then plug at x by 2 there. So this one. So I want to show this one is equal to this, that is t equal to 0. That is a claim. So we'll use this one and then prove that t equal to 0. So let's try to prove that. <coughs> so how do I prove that? So claim t equal to 0 and then we will be done. Let us try to prove the claim. So note that uh, <coughs> recall that uh, tau x was silver adjoint. And uh, add x is, is silver adjoint also. Add x by 2 is also silver adjoint. So this means that T is self-adjoint. Okay. And uh, moreover, so this this one will imply that um, so add x by two 
compose t equal to zero. So this means that um, the image of t is contained inside the kernel of uh, add x by t. Okay, we are almost done. So then, <clears throat> finally, so <clears throat> and but what is the kernel of this one? So the kernel of this one is simply all the matrices y says that y commutes with x. So image is here. So you want to claim t is zero. Uh, so I mean t is zero. So yeah. So what do I do then? <clears throat> so let us call this v. This kernel. Let us call this v. So this is a subspace of uh, I mean R, and uh, <clears throat> so let. Uh, so. So, yeah. So, so let let us choose some vector uh, v. Let's say from the orthogonal complement of this one. <clears throat> so then, what do I get? So <clears throat> then, for all. W, you get uh, that. Uh, so we just want to understand what is happening on uh, this one. When I apply t, what is happening here? So I want to prove that t is zero. So I want to first show that t will kill this one, and then I will choose something from here. I'll show that t kills that one too. So that will prove that t is zero. So then uh, t v inner product w. So it is self-adjoint. So therefore v t w. Okay, but uh, this this is in the image of T, and the image is contained inside V, and this is in V part, so this is zero. So this inner product is zero for all W. So this implies T V is zero. So this implies T is zero on the V perpendicular. Okay, and uh, finally you want to show that T is zero here. I think that is easier than this one. So yeah. So, yeah. So for this one, so note that if uh, something commutes with x, if v, uh, so if x y equal to y x, then note that what these two operators are doing individually, tau x and this sine hyperbolic by this thing to this y. <coughs> And you will see both of them are fixing y. So therefore, you are done. Add x by 2 is, uh, I mean, the tau x y is y. Let's go back to the formula that defines tau x. And notice that whenever x and y commute, then tau x fixes this. And also, sine hyperbolic add x by 2, that will, uh, this thing will also fix y. So this implies that uh, t on y is 0. Okay. So therefore, t is 0 on uh, v, and it is on the orthogonal complement of that also. So hence, t is 0. This proves the number two, okay, and then number three. <clears throat> so for three, what you do is the following. <clears throat> so we have to use this uh, number two for proving this three. So you start like this. So <clears throat> so we are given some x. So uh, so x is self adjoint. So Therefore, uh, so let v1, v2, vn be an orthonormal basis. Um, basis of Rn 
where these are eigenvectors of x. So, this is possible because uh, x is self adjoint. Eigenvectors. So, idea is that uh, uh, we, we check this uh, inequality on some special kind of vectors which is easier to check and then through that they will generate the whole space. We'll find, so I'll define right now. So, <clears throat> so I'll define this, uh, so define the linear operators a i j on the space R n such that um, a i j s, so i j both are varying from 1 to n as follows. So, a i j on e k, it is sending it to delta i j, uh, j k, so this is the chronicle delta times e i. Okay. Make sense? So, uh, this is for all k. Ah, I mean v, sorry. So, uh, actually, so if you pretend that this v1, v2, vn, these are uh, standard basis, e1 into en, so this simply means that this matrix aij is nothing but it has zeros everywhere except for the place i comma j, like that. And uh, all these things um, that I'm going to say, uh, as exercises, they will follow really uh, the special case when these are e1 into en, and then you can make this rigorous. So. I'll, uh, yeah, so some of the statements I'll just leave for you to check. And uh, so here is one, for instance. <clears throat> uh, so exercise, check that. Uh, a i j transpose is same thing as a g i. Like that. So, uh, so now, so, so note that this forms uh, Yeah, so again, it is a, it is another exercise for you to check that uh, AIJs form an orthonormal basis of M in R. So once this is done, then uh, so I can write down this matrix X in terms of this AIJs. So let us write that. So let, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So since I am always working with add x by 2, so I'll say, uh, so let x by 2 be equal to, um, <clears throat> say let's say lambda ij times eij. I can do that because Ah, so I mean a i j. Because of this one, I can write it like this, and then uh, you just apply. So we know that v one, v two, v n these are eigenvectors, <coughs> and uh, so therefore if you really pretend that these are e one, e two, e n. Then you know that this x is a diagonal matrix. So therefore, this will imply. So note that. So check. Want us to check this? that this, then I can write this as simply lambda i i a i i. <clears throat> i is varying from 1 to n, where these are nothing but the eigenvalues <clears throat> corresponding to v i. Okay. So maybe I just write this as, uh, yeah, but it's okay. So, so this one, so where uh, so if I apply x by 2 on vi, then I'll get this uh, lambda i. Okay, make sense? So this gives a very simple description of this one. And similarly, you do it for y. So, so let y be equal to, uh, let's say, ai, uh, maybe I should use something else. Maybe mu ij times aij. 
<coughs> and then you can check that since uh, this is symmetric, so therefore this will imply that y is self adjoint, so therefore it will follow that <coughs> this actually uh, so uh, mu i j uh, equal to mu uh, j i. Okay. So then uh, y also has a special description and uh, now so now I yeah so so now another exercise for you is that um, is that uh, so suppose I multiply uh, two things a i j and uh, k l so then this becomes uh, so Kronecker delta j k times a i l <coughs> So we have to use that tau x is sine hyperbolic at x by 2 by at x by 2. And so first of all, therefore, let's understand what is happening on um, uh, so at x by 2 acting on, so let us compute this one, a i j. So I'll use that, this is simply, um, yeah, so maybe just write this as lambda k k uh, a, so no, not e. A, 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 okay, and this one A, I, J, so compute that using this exercise, so therefore this, uh, this is summation lambda K, K, bracket A, K, K, comma A, I, J, so K is varying uh, uh, from 1 to 8, of course. And so let's write down. So <coughs> a k k <coughs> times a i j minus a i j times uh, a k like this. But uh, this is zero unless j and k are same. This one. So here, therefore, I should have uh, k equal to i, right? So therefore, this is uh, this one. So if I break this into two summation. Then from here, only contribution is uh, lambda i i. So this is i i, and so a i j. And here, so when j equal to k, then only it is uh, non-zero. So therefore, uh, uh, j equal to k. So therefore, this is lambda j j a j i, right? Sorry. Um, I j, sorry. Okay. Make sense? So therefore, this is a lambda i i minus a lambda j j on a i j. Okay. So finally, we have to understand the action on um, y. So use this calculation and compute that. So then what do I see? Hmm. Yeah. So in particular, so this Eij is, is an eigenvector of this uh, at x by 2. And so now if I apply a sine hyperbolic, so this, this will then imply that <coughs> uh, so therefore tau x on e, uh, uh, Aij is simply sine hyperbolic of uh, lambda i minus uh, i i minus lambda j j divided by lambda i i minus lambda j j times a i j. Of course, uh, it can happen that this is zero. Lambda i i may be equal to lambda j j. So, in that case, this is one. So. By this, I really mean, so as I said, so first compute sine hyperbolic x by x and then plug all these things. So this may be kind of uh, confusing, but it means uh, 1 when this lambda i i equal to lambda j j. So we have this computation. So therefore, now we can write down its action on y. So, 
the why was uh, so therefore i get this uh, so hence uh, tau x on y it is simply uh, y was something mu ij i use that uh, notation okay so i'll write out that so uh, so therefore this is a summation mu ij times uh, sine hyperbolic lambda ii minus lambda gj divided by lambda ii minus lambda gj times the ij. So therefore, now we are able to compute this uh, norm of this one because we know that these are unit vectors. So this implies that the norm of tau x y square, let's say. So then this is simply summation mu i j square times uh, this, all these things lambda i i minus lambda j j. This whole thing square, and this is a unit vector like this. And uh, so now this is a basic calculus exercise that this is always bigger than or equal to one. So therefore, this is bigger than or equal to uh, summation mu i j square, which is the norm of y square. <coughs> so this proves one part of this third part of this lemma. So now we have to see when this is a equality. So note that equality holds if and only if uh, so when this is one, right? But uh, maybe this is bigger than zero and this is a uh, uh, zero. Then also it is possible. So then, uh, so this is true if and only if uh, mu ij equal to zero whenever this is a um, whenever uh, this is uh, lambda i i equal to lambda g so this is the case when <coughs> uh, this equality will hold okay so, and then uh, so when is it possible that uh, so therefore so if you try to write down this matrix a therefore what do i see so now um Oh, sorry, I don't mean that. This is not equal. Okay. So whenever this is not equal to, uh, these are not equal, then this is bigger than one, and so mu i j has to be zero in that case. So now, uh, so let's see. Uh, so therefore, I can write this. Uh, once I have this condition on y. And I can write this one as um, uh, <clears throat> so what was this one? So this is summation uh, mu ij so add x on uh, aij was uh, lambda i i minus lambda j. So this is aij. And then we know that uh, some of these uh, will be equal. So just consider when these are not equal. So, so I, uh, lambda i i is not equal to lambda g j. Only this sum will matter, right? So, but I say that whenever these are not equal, and this is not equal to zero, this is zero. So therefore, this is zero. So therefore, this condition is equivalent to saying that add x by two on y is zero. Therefore, hence, equality holds only if uh, equality holds if and only if 
add x by 2 on y 0, that is x y commute. Okay, so this is a quite a long proof, but we are done finally. So, <clears throat> is it okay? Ah, so we have this condition on y. So y was mu yj times aij, but this is true for y. Whenever these two are not equal, this coefficient is zero. So therefore, you get this. So this proves this uh, lemma. So now I'll write down something more interesting proposition. <clears throat> so let alpha t be any curve, a smooth curve inside SNR. And let PT be the image under exponential map. So PT is some curve on the PNR. And so now you want to compare these two. So then, <clears throat> race of alpha prime T square is less than or equal to trace of P inverse P prime this one square. And equality holds equality holds if and only if uh, P T and P prime T commute. So notice that so this one is giving the, uh, this is what, so this is giving the length of the tang uh, length of tangent vector on alpha t. And uh, this is giving the length of the tangent vectors to pt. So this proposition is comparing these two. So it is saying that whenever I have this, then the length of pt, p, the curve p would be bigger than length of or alpha. So this is quite a geometric theorem. <coughs> So now let's try to prove this using this uh, all these things that we have done so far. Uh, so, so we first uh, translate this in terms of this tau x, and then we'll use all those lemmas that we have proved. So, uh, so what we do is that uh, fix a point, fix a point, uh, fix t naught in the interior of the domain of this curve. Uh, alpha and uh, so so let x be alpha of t naught and y be alpha prime t naught okay so now so uh, let's see so then i will write this p inverse uh, p prime square this one trace of this this one you can easily see that this is uh, equal to e to the minus half uh, e uh, derivative of p times p to the minus half whole square. <coughs> okay. You can easily check with uh, uh, this easy compute using usual properties of trace. And now evaluate at um, evaluate at this. Uh, Point T zero. So evaluate this one at T zero. T zero. The, uh, this right hand side. Then what is this? So this is simply uh, the trace of this one is a uh, exponential uh, minus x by two. And this p prime uh, at t naught, so I can write down this one as ddt of 
exponential uh, x plus t y computed at t naught zero sorry zero and then um, exponential uh, minus x by two this whole thing square okay so then th this one <coughs> This one is nothing but tau x y. So this is equal to trace of tau x y whole square. So the left hand side of this inequality is uh, y square, and this is trace of tau x. Okay, hence we need to show that. Um, Trace of y square is less than equal to okay, trace of tau x y whole square like this. And then equality holds if and only if something happens. T uh, t t naught. So that is exponential x. And uh, whatever, so that derivative, so p prime, so I'll just write this as commute. And uh, this one is simply the same thing as um, dt of exponential x plus t y at t naught, t equal to zero. This one. <clears throat> so now we are uh, reduced to this problem. And for that, so now uh, go back to this lemma. So the lemma said that, so lemma, lemma also compared this uh, lens. Okay, so third part of the lemma, it says that this is uh, always true. So the first part of this, therefore, that uh, where? So here. So this one is already done. Because this one, uh, this, uh, this is the length square. This is the length of y square. So the first part of this is already done by the third part of this previous lemma. And the, the, the lemma also said that these two are equal when x and y commute. So then I have to just translate this here. So that is, I have to say these two commute if and only x, y commute. This, this is the thing that I have to show now. Is it okay? So y is self-adjoint, so therefore this is the length of y square. Uh, so note that <clears throat> this is equal to trace y square and similarly uh, length of tau x y square is this one hence uh, trace y square is less than equal to trace of tau x by the third part of the previous lemma. Then I have to just check why these two are same, that x, y commute, each and only live, these two things commute. Okay. So uh, this one is not very difficult, so this kind of exercise for you. So. I'll tell you what to do. So, <clears throat> yeah, so how do we show this? So, x, y commute, this is what we are trying to show. If I now leave exponential x, so let us say this, let us call this a, and the other one b. So note that uh, both are self-adjoint. A, B are self-adjoint. So then you are reduced to showing first that X, Y, uh, A, B. Uh, yeah. So this to commute, if and only if 
using that they are self adjoint if and only first step is to show that x and b commute okay basically you have to use the fact that uh, when two things commute then each preserve the eigen space of the other using that and also the fact that x and exponential x will have the same kind of eigen spaces using those two things you can show this one so exponential x commutes with some matrix you can only x commutes with that so both are assuming that both are self adjoint so this and then after this uh, so therefore we are reduced to now showing that uh, so this to commute uh, yeah so now we have to show that x and b commute if and only x y commute like that so that was uh, i think that is by some previous uh, observation so observation was uh, this we have already made the observation but i forgot to stress on this so yeah so <clears throat> we made some observation some time back we have already proved this uh, that x times b minus b times x is uh, exponential x times y Uh, minus y times exponential x. This was used in the previous lemma, proof of the previous lemma. So now use that, and then this is a simple exercise. Okay. So use this and the same exercise. So. <clears throat> complete the proof okay so this was the hard work necessary for this thing so now we will have no more such calculations is it okay so far so now what i'll do is that um, so now we just derive corollaries out of this The, all the nice nice things will now follow from this two results <clears throat> the first thing is that so let x be inside the symmetric matrices and suppose the length of x is 1 then the curve t going to exponential dx is a geodesic geodesic in pnr okay so proof so let alpha be the curve t going to tx inside uh, snr so snr was the tangent space or identity so i'll draw a picture finally i'll draw a picture so so this is a So here I have alpha is going from zero to x, uh, x like this. You don't have to say x, but anyway. So, <clears throat> uh, so now, uh, so this is this curve t going to exponential t x like this. So, <clears throat> so notice that here alpha prime t is x. So at all points, I'll, uh, this uh, is to commute t t. and p prime t they always commute for this one so then equality holds so note that by the previous proposition this uh, length of alpha is equal to a uh, length of uh, this curve so let us call this p i don't know maybe yeah maybe something else so exponential <clears throat> by the previous lemma okay and uh, <clears throat> so now i want to show that this is a geodesic so what you do is that you join 
uh, these two points, maybe this is not x, maybe some, some other point, let's say t not x or something like that. So now you join these two points by some smooth curve. So, so join 0 to uh, t not x by, uh, by a piecewise smooth curve. Smooth curve. <coughs> Then the length of this curve here is always bigger than or equal to the length of this, so because it's Euclidean space, right? So, so then uh, let us say uh, maybe beta or something. So then the length of beta is always bigger than or equal to length of alpha. And uh, by the lemma, we know that uh, length of exponential composed uh, beta is of course bigger than or equal to <coughs> length of beta, right? So now you have to use the fact that exponential gives a diffeomorphism from this tangent space to the whole PNR. So therefore, given any path here, that is the exponential image of some curve here, image of uh, some curve under the exponential map, right? So, uh, so for any path, I can find some path beta such that that path is exponential composed beta, like that. So therefore, this proves that for any path here, the length is bigger than this path. Okay, so therefore this is the shortest curve. Yes. What is that? No, it is not. So that's the point. So that uh, this. Uh, yes. Right. So uh, because uh, this one, and then you have this. For the special curve, we have the equality. Okay. So therefore, this uh, this minimizes length. Okay. So therefore, this uh, this is a path of minimum length. Uh, hence, it follows that this uh, this path t going to exponential t x is a uh, geodesic. Of course, uh, uh, maybe in the Riemannian uh, geometry class. We have seen that uh, <coughs> some other definition of geodesic, but it's a standard fact that if some path minimizes length, then it will be geodesic in the same sense. One can show that. Okay, so this proves that uh, these are geodesics. Of course, now remark is that very interesting remark you gave that this therefore this exponential map is the Riemannian exponential map, the exponential map of the Riemannian geometry. We know that um, so given some um, given some uh, remaining manifold and fix a point from the tangent space, some part of tangent space at least to the manifold. I have this map, exponential map. What what does it do? So given some vector, so you consider the geodesic that starts with that velocity, like that. So this corollary says that this exponential map that we described before, matrix exponential map, that is the Riemannian exponential map for this space PNR. So this is a very nice uh, this thing. <coughs> and you get many other things. So all of this interesting uh, results now, uh, this can be easily proved using this. So now, for instance, the PNR is uniquely geodesic. So what does it mean? So it means that given a pair of points, uh, there is a unique geodesic connecting these two points. And so how do I prove this? So we know that, uh, <coughs> uh, so we know that uh, G ln R is acting transitively on this space. So now given a pair of points, just uh, act by some G ln R element and move one point to the identity. So then we just have to show that given any point, there is a unique geodesic connecting this point to the this given point. Okay. So using GLNR action to so proof. So GLNR acts transitively by isometries. So isometry send geodesic to geodesic, that is the thing that so acts on PNR transitively. 
by isometries. Hence, it is enough to show that for all points P, but uh, this exponential map was a diffeomorphism, so I can say that this is of this form exponential x. So, uh, show that for all P, like this, there is a unique geodesic. There is a unique geodesic connecting identity to this. But again, so if there is some other geodesic uh, joining identity to P, I will just take the inverse image under the exponential map, and that will give me some path which is not on the straight line in the in the tangent space. Okay, and that will contradict. Okay, so this follows. So I just briefly write this follows from the previous corollary. From the proof of the previous corollary. Okay, so from the pre uh, proof of the previous corollary, this follows. And uh, so here is something nice. <clears throat> so again, maybe I should write down as a proposition, but all of these are corollaries of this proposition. So suppose I have a geodesic triangle. Suppose we have a geodesic triangle. Let's call it A, B, C in P and R. So I'll draw a picture. And this will help me to write less. So A, B, C. So these sides are geodesic segments. And this is length A. This one is B, C. And this angle is, uh, is uh, need for the statement. Then, <clears throat> then um, what I have is that C square is bigger than equal to A square plus B square minus twice AB cosine the angle at C. <clears throat> okay. So this is what is called a cat zero condition. Okay, so I'll just briefly recall what. So let let's first prove this. So uh, yeah. So the statement uh, this one and more. So suppose if uh, C is equal to identity, this point C is a point identity, then equality holds if and only if. So this is an equality holds if and only if. The triangle, the geodesic triangle, is uh, contained contained in the orbit of the point identity. Uh, yeah, so orbit of some. Uh, yeah, maybe so I'll write this as identity orbit. Of a connected abelian subgroup. Subgroup of G and R in P and R. Quite a nice statement. Proof. Again, we'll draw this picture. <clears throat> so, uh, draw a picture in the. So, yeah. So, basically, uh, since uh, again, so GLNR action is transitive. So, I'll move the point C to identity. So, so, so 
So without loss of generality, assume that that is this GLNR action, C is identity. Okay. And then you draw this picture. So here I'll draw this. Oh, sorry. This is in the Euclidean space. Like this. So this is our C, that is identity. And uh, this may be A, B, like this. This point is zero. And maybe, I don't know, so let us call it something. So maybe um, T, E, like that. <clears throat> that is in the tangent space. So we know that uh, so this straight line segment is coming to a geodesic segment here, similarly here. But uh, it may not be true that this straight line segment here is mapping to the <clears throat> geodesic here. Okay? So if I take this geodesic here, so that will be some path connecting this D and E. Okay? So maybe call it alpha. So when I map this alpha, which may not be the, it may be, but it may not be so. Uh, <clears throat> then the image of that is uh, this thing. And of course, uh, the angle here is same thing as the angle here. Okay. So therefore, you get that from this that uh, the distance between T E, okay, is of course less than or equal to the length of alpha. Okay, length of alpha is bigger, and that is bigger than or equal to this length, that is C. So D E is smaller than C, right? Because we know that when I go by exponential map, the distance is increasing. We have proved that. A, B is the image of alpha, right? And the image is geodesic, I am assuming. So now, therefore, uh, <clears throat> so therefore, just use the Euclidean, this thing. So therefore, we know that uh, T is square is equal to A square plus B square minus 2 twice A, B cosine the same angle at O, that is the same thing as C. This must be less than or equal to C square. So this proves the first part of this corollary, okay? And uh, so to prove the next part, now what I do is the following. So, you know, the point is that what is the angle? So angle means it is the angle between the tangent vectors. Okay, so it has nothing to do with the identity, okay? Angle means it is the angle between tangent vectors, so that's why. Uh, uh, of course, yeah, then I have to say that this path is landing to this one, so that will use identity. Yes, yes. So t going to exponential t x, so that corollary I have to use. So I. So now, <clears throat> so okay. So now I will stop with this corollary. So I have to prove that this equality. So equality means what? Equality means uh, this uh, this uh, this line segment is mapping to a geodesic. Okay. So equality holds if and only if. If and only if <coughs> um, <coughs> alpha is alpha here, so I'm not writing all this. So alpha is the path. This is geodesic. So that is t going to the length is c. So I'll write up. Uh, so I just so I've written that um, <coughs> c minus t times x by c plus uh, t by c times y. Yeah, so maybe I should have said, uh, so where, yeah, so maybe this is uh, d and d, so this vector o d is x, x is o d, and y is o e. Like that. So now, if and only if it is uh, up to some parameterization, maybe. Okay. Uh, so this is alpha, and now I apply this lemma, which says that uh, 
the lemma with the proposition. So it says that so, so, uh, this will map to the cu curve of same length only when this uh, x and y, the point and the tangent vector, they commute. So this, this means that x, y, this equality holds if and only if x, y commute. Just use the proposition. And in the proof of the proposition, we have seen that it simply means that x and y commute. The point x and the tangent vector direction, y, they will commute. So this is the thing. And then therefore, um, <clears throat> so therefore this implies, <clears throat> so this implies one direction of the, this is the last part of this. So this implies, so if v is the linear span of these two vectors x, y, then the triangle ABC is contained in exponential V. So since, a, uh, since V is XY commute, so then there's abelian. So this group would be abelian, so connect to the abelian subgroup. Okay? So this proves one direction of this last part of the corollary. Therefore, for the for the last part, uh, I mean the other direction of this, what you have to do is that, um, yeah, I just write down one remark and then I'll just stop. Why the other direction holds? The other direction holds because, uh, <clears throat> so if, if, uh, so H is a connected abelian, A group in GLN intersection PN, okay, and I suppose I have two points, uh, so of course I can write this as, a, so suppose I have one point exponential x inside H, H. then you notice that um, So you notice that um, yeah. So what, what do I have to show that as I have some uh, this triangle which is contained in the orbit of this kind of a thing, H, and then I have to show these equality holds, right? So therefore, what I'm saying is that suppose A is exponential a, x and B is exponential y, okay? So then what you do is that, um, yeah, so I mean, uh, on identity, of course, uh, yes, yeah, what I mean is that, um, yeah, no, no, okay, so that will come later, so maybe, uh, so this is, this is not A, so suppose this true, then you check that this is an exercise, I'll just write down the exercise, and this, this thing will follow from there. So then you check that exponential of Tx is also inside H for all T. This simply uses the fact that X is a self-adjoint. All the elements of each, they are self-adjoint. So you can, and this is abelian, so you can simultaneously diagonalize and then use that to prove this one. So once you prove this, then you will be done basically. Because, uh, so suppose I have some point A like that, so I'll write uh, that one as, let's say, exponential x, but that will be the uh, identity orbit uh, of this uh, exponential x by 2. So I can write like that. And then I can do all this calculation. x, y, this tangent vectors will be x, y, x, y, and they'll commute because of this abelianness, and that will prove this. Okay? I just leave this as an exercise to complete the proof. So I'll stop. Yes. 